Hey, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll show you how to build this contact form with Livewire. I'll go over how to best structure your component and some cool little things that are included with Livewire to make this easier. I've already built a bunch of stuff around this, which I'll go over in a second. We'll actually start now. So I've run a migration. I'll show you this. So it's a, it's a contacts table with a name column, email column, and message column. With this, I also created a contact model which just has the typical Laravel 8 has factory trait and I set guarded to empty so we don't have any fillable issues. I've also gone ahead and actually already created a component. This was done using the art make live wire and I just uh, named it contact form. And of course it says uh, it already exists. So it's, it's there, but that's the, that's the command you run if you wanna create live wire components. In here, the component looks like so, but I'll actually first show you the routes file. So I have a root route that, that redirects to contact and then contact route that just basically uh, shows the contact form component. One thing to note that if you're actually, actually showing a component right from here, from a route, what Livewire will do is it'll expect an app.blade.php within the layouts directory right here. And it's gonna expect a slot right here. This is where the, uh, the component will go. And of course you have to include the Livewire styles and Livewire scripts. If you don't actually have Livewire installed, just before I, I, I get started on the tutorial, you wanna run composer require Livewire, Livewire. And that'll install it for you. But of course I already have it, so. Okay, so to get started, basically we have two files that really concern us. It's uh, contact form and contact-form.blade.php. So this is what's gonna be in that slot in the app.blade.php template file. And this contact form here, this component, is what's gonna be controlling the contact form. I'm gonna start with something really, really basic and then we'll work our way up to validation and I'll kind of explain it on the way why I'm doing what I'm doing. If you're new to Livewire, I'd check out some basic tutorials first. Maybe that'd be more helpful. Just to get started, Livewire has properties up at the top of the component that are available to the, the templates. And if we look at the final product, well, the starting point, but the, the UI here, there's a name, email, and message form fields, right? And so what we wanna do is actually create properties for these because we're gonna store data in there. So what we wanna do is create a name, create an email, and create a message. And in here, we just want to actually set wire model because that's what's actually gonna link those properties to the fields. So this is the name input. And I just wanna add a wire model is equal to name. This one's gonna be wire model is equal to email. And this one here is going to be wire model is equal to message. And that should be enough there. Now we're also gonna to want to create some way to submit this form. This form right now goes to contact and it posts. And that will no longer work once Livewire is enabled because obviously we don't want it to post. We want it to actually send data through the component. And there's a button here with type submit that actually submits this form. What we're going to do with the form here is just set wire submit dot prevent. And I'll explain this in a second. So we're gonna basically bind wire submit. If this, this, when this form submits, we want Livewire to submit this method on the component. Of course, this doesn't exist yet, but we'll create it in a second. Dot prevent basically prevents this form from doing what it was supposed to do, which is post. It's a very simple explanation, but that's basically what it is. Now that we know we need that method to actually submit the form, we can go ahead and create a public function submit form method. And in here, basically we can just dd1 for now and see if see if this form submission actually works. And it sure does, we got one. For those of you who don't know or maybe aren't familiar with PHP, DD means die and dump. Typically you just die and dump things out and see what the values are within your code, which is very useful here for just seeing that this method is actually called. Okay, so when this method is submitted, we want to actually create a contact record. If we look in the database, there's only one in here now. So I basically inputted my name, uh, a fake email and a message. And we want to do that in this method here. So what would we do first? Well, we want to create a contact uh, model and that's done like so. 
Just a quick note, I will not be sending mail in this tutorial. Mail is a topic on its own for Laravel. So you'll want to queue a mailable somewhere here, probably below this creation here for, of this record. For the purpose of this tutorial, it doesn't really have anything to do with Livewire. I just want to demonstrate how easy it is to, to build this logic and make it reactive with Livewire. So I'm just gonna stick to actually just creating records in a database for, for this tutorial. I wanna create a record with name and I wanna use this arrow name, which references this here. And of course, we already linked this with wire model. So whatever is typed into the input in HTML for this value in the contact form .blade.php, which would be this, that's what that value is gonna be. And that's what that's gonna be the value that's used to create the contact. And we're gonna do the same for the rest of them. I'm gonna import this. And let's go to our page here, reload, type in test, test at test.com. This is a test. Submit, and nothing happens, but maybe it's in the database, and it sure is. Test, test at test.com, and this is a test. So it creates the record. Well, what about wanting to reset the fields here? And this is one of those cool things that Livewire includes in their package. It makes things a lot cleaner in, in, in the actual component itself. Instead of just setting this name is equal to empty, empty string, which is fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this. We can just call this reset, pass in an array, and then pass in the names of the properties we want to reset. And then we can do it in one line. And this is much, much cleaner in my opinion. So now if we reload, test, test at test.com, this is a test two. Submit, inputs are gone, but the value is in the database. So it's doing exactly what we want it to. Now we can kind of move on to validate because what if these values are wrong? What if they're empty? What if the email is not an email? What if, you know, what, what if the message is too long? The way this is done with Livewire is we just basically create a protected property here called rules. And this is a, an array. Within here, we define using like the keys are the names of the properties we want to validate. And the values are the actual validation logic or, or values. This will make more sense in a second. So I want the name to be required, but I don't really have any limitations for it. I want the email to also be required, but I do have an email validation uh, requirement for it. And these, these validator constraints are Laravel specific, so they're gonna be in the documentation. This, this has nothing to do with Livewire itself. Livewire just makes it really easy to define this rules property and use it within your component. And message, I want also to be required, obviously, and I want the text to be a minimum of five in length, let's say. In here, this actually won't validate anything. We have to call this arrow validate. And now if this validation fails for any of these values, we will never reach this. It, it will never submit. So if I type in something like this at test.com, but type in something here that's under five characters in length, like test, it won't submit and there's gonna be nothing in the database, as you can see. So the validation does work. It's just annoying that we can't actually see it. And so the easiest workaround for this is to, now this is kind of uh, specific for your UI, but in my case, it actually made sense to just define at error here, and you set the key, so the, whichever field should, whichever error should pop up in this spot, you should set the key there, and error. And in here, I just define paragraph tag. So I'd put the key here. If, the, if this error for name comes up, it'll just include this paragraph element in the page, and it'll automatically output the default validator message in this spot. And so if name fails, that'll show up there. If email fails, this will show up here. And if message fails, this will show up here. So if I refresh and try this again, you can see that this is too short and this is a this email field is required. If I put email or test at test.com and try again, it'll still show that this message must be at least five characters. If I make this five characters but remove the name, it'll now fail there. And none of these submissions will actually go through. As you can see, nothing's changed. 
So the validator does work. What if we want to show a success message if this, uh, if this validation works? Well, this is actually pretty easy too. We can just create a property here called success. And down here, we just set this success equal to a string uh, that we want to show when the, the form submits successfully. So it could be your inquiry has been submitted successfully. Of course, this won't change, just defining it here won't actually show it in, inside the view. What we'll have to do is just wrap this block here, which is actually already rendered on the page, this right here. We're just gonna have to wrap this in a if success, and here we'll put success. Oops, this should be a variable. Okay, so it doesn't show up anymore, but if I submit, Let's try test five, test at test.com, testing five. Now, of course, this, this will work with all validation rules, so it will submit. We can see that success, your inquiry has, been, inquiry has been submitted successfully right at the top. If we refresh the page, it doesn't show up anymore because obviously the state's been wiped clean. If we look in our database, that record's actually there, which means it was created. And of course we know it was created because the field, form fields were reset and the success message was set as well. Now this is pretty much done, but there is one little thing that I really, really like about Livewire, which I think is really cool and it takes us to a, another level basically. There's this method you can include called updated. And I like to just pass in field, but you can pass in uh, any variable you want basically. And you can, call this validate only field. If we reload, we can write test seven, test at test.com, and we can already see something, something is different. If I put in one character here, it's already validating on every change. And if I finally get to five, the validator will stop freaking out. This is annoying, but you can see what this is doing. Every time one of these properties is updated, the validator is called on that, that field, right? And so it's only gonna validate that one field. And so every time this is updated, which in this case is on basically every key down or key up event, it'll validate. That's a little bit annoying though, because we don't wanna validate until someone's moved on to the next field. How do we fix this? Well, there's no need to be updating these properties as often as we are. And so we can add dot lazy to the wire model. And dot lazy basically, when, when you add this, basically this property will only be updated once the user moves on to or clicks out of this element. And I'll show you what I mean. If I refresh the page and type in test seven, let's try this one, test, click away here. As you can see, it, it does not see that this is a valid field because the length is not enough. If I click now, it does. If I do this, it'll say that again. If I leave this blank, it'll say this is required. If I leave this blank, it'll also say this is required. And so this is kind of validating before the user even submits the form, but not so often that it's annoying. Uh, and it's not often enough to also be super taxing on the back end because Livewire will be making all these requests to the back end. So that's pretty much it. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please do consider subscribing. I'm trying to grow this channel. Uh, it's, it's basically a hobby of mine. I work as a full stack developer right now. So this is kind of just my after, after hours project. But if you do find this helpful, please do consider subscribing. It really does help out. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, I'm all ears. I love La Laravel, Livewire. I use inertia at work, view stuff. I'm open to suggestions. So please do let me know. Thank you. And I hope to see you in the next one.